The Old Testament reading for the resurrection of our Lord is from Exodus, the 14th and 15th chapters. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God who was going before the host of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness. And it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watched the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen. Of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. 
But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and he went into the tomb. And he saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the Scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around And saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher, Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Thee, O Christ. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? You may be seated. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. God be praised that we are gathered here as we've been emphasizing all week on the 1,990th anniversary of our Lord's death and resurrection from the dead. We, we, We want to hone in on those numbers because this is a true event. It's something that really happened. We know when it happened. We know where it happened. On Sunday, April 5th, in the year 33 A.D., our Lord Jesus Christ, on the third day after His death, in the middle of the night sometime, rose from the dead, walked out of the tomb. God be praised. And this, like everything that He did, is also and always for us. We want to think about why, though. Why the death and resurrection of Jesus is such good news for us today. All of us have various problems and difficulties, stuff that bothers us, 
But it all goes back to really three things. Sin, death, and the devil. And, and those three, and, and let's make sure we get this, those three are always bound up together. Remember how the devil came and tempted Eve to sin, and the result was death. On the day that you eat of it, surely you will die. So when Adam and Eve ate that forbidden fruit, they sinned and they were dying and they were there, friends with the devil hiding in the bushes from God the Father. It's an ugly picture, but it's the same for us. And whatever, and, and whatever the trouble that we have, this is the same problem. Sin, or death, or the devil. Sin, sometimes our own sin, the things that we do wrong, the commands that we break, Sometimes other people sins against us or sins against our neighbor, death. Sometimes our own death as we see it creeping us on, up on us. Sometimes the death of those that we love, that we mourn, those who aren't here with us this Easter. And the devil who always is tempting us to, is to stand in guilt before God. These are, always, these are always bound up together. And that's the problem that the Lord is getting after at Easter. Now look, we've we got to be very clear on this. The problem is not living forever. That's not that difficult. Remember there was, a, there was a strange thing that happened in the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve fell and there they are with their fig leaves and then they're hiding from God walking in the, in the, in the cool of the day and then the Lord finds them and he, he rebukes the devil. He says that the seed of the woman will crush your head. That's that promise of Jesus. And then the Lord takes an animal and he skins it and he wraps the skin around them to cover their nakedness. And then, remember what happens? The Lord drove them out of the garden. Why? so that they wouldn't eat from the tree of life and live forever. You see, living forever is not the problem. The Lord could plant a tree that has fruit that could cause you to live forever and never die. That's easy. The problem is that if Adam and Eve and you and I would have eaten from that tree, we would have lived forever in our guilt and in our sin, and in our shame, we would have lived forever as God's enemies. A life eternal, experiencing the opposition of God and the anger of God. And the Lord wouldn't have it. He put, he put the cherubim there, these, these fl flaming angels, to protect the way into the garden, to make sure that Adam and Eve couldn't get back to that tree and eat from it and live. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't trying to keep them from something good. He was trying to keep them from the worst possible thing, eternal life apart from God. No, the Lord will give us eternal life when He gives His Son to die for us. He will give us eternal life when He forgives our sins. He will give us eternal life when He turns His anger away from us and gives us His smile so that the eternal life that we have is not a life apart from God, but life with God. So the angels were guarding the way so they didn't come to the tree, but the angels were waiting in the tomb because that's where we find that's where we find life with God's smile. <laughs> life with God's kindness. Life with God's mercy. Life with the forgiveness of sins. Life that will be forever in the glory of his face. And that glory will not, will not destroy you. But it will be your hope and your peace. It's an amazing thing that Jesus really preaches one sermon after his resurrection. It doesn't matter if it's Mary Magdalene. We had this beautiful story of Mary who comes to the garden and, and there's the angel. Why are you crying? I don't know where Jesus is, she says. She turns around, there's Jesus. She thinks it's the gardener. Why are you crying? I'm, if you've taken him, tell me where he is. And then Jesus so peacefully, Mary, don't be afraid. To the disciples in the upper room, don't be afraid. To Thomas, who was doubting, don't be afraid. Whatever it is, 
Sin? The sin that you've committed? The laws that you've broken? The the guilt in your own conscience? Dear saints, do not be afraid. The sin committed against you? The, The anger that's boiling around? The hurt that you've suffered? The shame? Don't be afraid. The grave sickness waiting for you, waiting for your loved ones, Don't be afraid. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And He takes away that sin with the forgiveness of sins. He opens the grave by the power of His resurrection. And He has conquered the devil in His death and suffering. He he wants Jesus who's risen and sits at the Father's right hand, he wants you all to know this most of all today. That his resurrection made a way for you to come to eternal life unafraid. His resurrection makes a way for you to stand before him on the judgment day unafraid. His resurrection means that no matter what happens, no matter what baggage you have behind you, no matter what fears are in front of you, that His resurrection means that He has conquered and He has done all of that for you. So that you would stand with Mary, with the disciples, with all the church, rejoicing in His resurrection. So let us delight in this news, in this history, in this event accomplished 1,990 years ago. The grave is empty, and that means one day your grave will be just as empty, and you will stand before the Lord Jesus clothed in His glorious resurrection and His eternal life, praising Him forever. Why? Because Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.